What makes the rice of chicken rice taste good? Through a series of experiments, I explore my favorite ingredients to flavor the rice and find the best techniques to cook it. Like why should we stir fry the aromatics and what if we don't? Which tool should be used to prepare the aromatics so I can come up with my best rice recipe backed by reasons and experiments? My approach to find the best ingredients is to first test which tastes the best, then balance the proportions for ideal flavor. The four components of a chicken rice are the liquid, oil, aromatics, and the rice. I'm using basmati long grain rice here, but you can use whatever rice grain you like. A simple test to begin is which component is the most important, so we know what to focus on. I have here plain white rice boiled in plain water as control, rice boiled with chicken stock only, rice boiled with water and chicken oil only, rice boiled with aromatics in water only, and rice with all the components. Initially, I was expecting chicken oil to be the most flavorful driver because fat is flavor, right? But what I learned here is that the stock actually drives most of the flavor body and it probably has some chicken oil in it too, hence giving the rice a more consistent sheen so every grain is separated, even better than with the chicken oil alone as it's pretty much the same as white rice, clumpy and dry. The aromatics only version is also flavorful even though there's no chicken flavor as it adds an earthy flavor and a little tan color too. The combination of stock, aromatics and oil makes delicious chicken rice. So for the most important component, chicken stock, what type of chicken stock makes the tastiest rice? I have here 5 samples made with light to rich chicken stock. Most chicken rice recipes say just use the liquid after boiling the chicken to make the rice. But this liquid to me is really not rich enough in flavor to make good chicken rice. I have another video to explain how to make good chicken stock. Basically, they're all made with just chicken bones and water only. And the key ingredient is thyme, lots of thyme, boiled from 1 hour to 24 hours, resulting in leaner to fuller flavor profiles. After sampling these rice samples, we like the 24 hour stock the most as we could eat the most out of it and it has deep, bold chicken flavors. The amount of stock added to rice depends on how firm or how soft you like your rice to be. We use 1 to 2 rice to stock for a medium texture, but you can also control the texture by using high heat or low heat after the stock reaches a boil. Here's what I mean. A quick recap on how rice cooks is by boiling the rice with just enough liquid so that the rice absorbs it and cooks also under the hot steam. High heat evaporates the liquid faster so the rice spends less time steaming while low heat drags out the cooking time, making the rice softer. In the end, there should just be a little touch of moisture left at the bottom so every grain comes out without sticking. Before we dive next into the aromatics to find which combination of aromatics tastes best, we need to first understand how chicken rice gets its flavors. Basically, we're cooking pilaf, a rice dish flavored with stock and spices. And there are thousands of variations around the world as people cook their rice with what they like. If you made butter rice or garlic rice before, it's a pilaf. I count the rice of chicken rice a kind of pilaf from Southeast Asia. What's special about chicken rice though is we're using chicken-focused ingredients like chicken stock, chicken oil rendered out from the chicken skin, and an aromatics combo popular in Asia for a dish from here, namely garlic, onions, and ginger. Generally, there are three methods to work the aromatics flavor into our rice, each have their pros and cons, but in short, I prefer to use the whole ingredient for better nutrition, texture and flavor. My ideal chicken rice flavor in my imagination has floral scents from ginger, onion sweetness and a breath of pungent garlic. To confirm which aromatic ingredient is the most important, I have here rice made from each aromatic only, and we ended up liking shallots only the most, followed closely by ginger. But how about combining the flavors? Turns out that we like shallots plus ginger more, which makes an addictive combo, and having no garlic is actually not a big deal after all. With all of them together though, I think garlic gives a little more oomph, while Natasha prefers a less to no garlic version. We'll take a closer look at each aromatics. For shallots, 
I've always wondered if it's better than onions, so I tried them raw and also rice made out of it, and we like using shallots more as it makes the rice more fragrant and moreish, while onions are a little sweeter but not as aromatic. For the ginger, there are actually many types of ginger out there and I have five different types here. Young ginger, old ginger, blue ginger, a kind of old ginger called Bentong ginger, named after a hilly town in Malaysia where it's grown. It's also featured under Michelin Guide. And turmeric, known also as yellow ginger. Young ginger has a refreshing light taste, while old ginger is more zesty and vibrant. Blue ginger, known also as galanga, tastes stronger with its menthol-like flavour with citrus notes. Bentong ginger has an even more spicy ginger flavour than regular old ginger. Turmeric has a faint mustard taste and is more sought after for its vibrant yellow colour for food colouring. But personally, I prefer the more natural tan colour of chicken rice. When tasted raw, she doesn't like the spicy kick from raw ginger, but the spiciness mostly goes away after cooking, leaving behind its fragrance. Overall, we like blue ginger the most for its perfume fragrance, followed by old ginger for its warm, zesty flavours. Together, they make a fragrant combo which makes you feel warm and fuzzy inside after eating the rice, so we'll use them both going forward. To balance the flavours of the aromatics and find out how much of each should we use, we tested out larger ratios of ginger holding shallots constant first and found 5% ginger to be light in scent, while 20% ginger gives a warm fuzzy feeling and is the max before it gets uncomfortably spicy. If you're familiar with baker's percentages, then it's the same concept here, expressing each ingredient amount in weight as a percentage of the weight of rice, and rice is always taken as 100%. Then, we vary shallots as we hold ginger constant and 20%, and found 10% to be the right balance, not too strong but subtle enough to champion the chicken flavours. 20% shallots is probably the max we'll go before it starts turning into shallots rice. Finally, we'll test this mix with garlic. A little garlic adds a richness in flavour overall compared to no garlic at all. Since we prefer the flavour of shallots to stand out, we keep garlic lower at 5% as a supporting character. There are two types of garlic, young garlic and old garlic, and after sampling them both raw and in chicken rice made with it, we like old garlic more for its mellower but broader flavour, while young garlic is very sharp and simpler in taste. In general, I believe each aromatic in the rice should be about 5-20% to which is a good range to follow, depending on how strong you like its flavours to be. We prefer a higher percentage of aromatics compared to chicken rice recipes I've seen, which usually use about 3-5% garlic or ginger and rarely shallots, and I like my rice super flavourful. What's surprising to me is that each one isn't two times as aromatic as the previous one, even though the amount of aromatics is doubled. I think it's probably only 20% more aromatic compared to the previous one. So you could get away with less, but if you want more, you gotta add a lot more aromatics. I think we're close to our dream chicken rice flavour, but there are two more ingredients I'm curious about, pandan and lemongrass. I see other recipes cook their rice with these aromatics, so I try them out by measuring roughly 5% of the rice weight so they remain as accent flavours, and after tasting them, the lemongrass doubles the aroma with a lemony fragrance, and the rice tastes better with it. But for pandan leaves, Natasha prefers without a scent as she prefers to use its fresh grassy scent in nasi lemak, which we'll explore next time. Though personally, I like the extra grassy scent. Why we should steam and not mix in the grass juices into the aromatics is because steaming the grass perfumes the rice, whereas mixing the juices squeezed out from the grass amends the overall flavour profile and the shallots ginger garlic combo doesn't stand out as much anymore. It's interesting how steaming versus adding in the juices can result in different tasting rice because we perceive taste from both our smell and our tongue. But overall, she prefers the plain and simple version without any grass scent, whereas I do appreciate the extra lemongrass or pandan scent for a more aromatic eating experience. But as further tests showed, don't use both because the overall scent becomes too confusing. I enjoy the pandan scent one more over the lemongrass one, but it's not a must to have them anyway. 
So to round up, our most preferred aromatics combo in the order of importance and as a percentage of rice weight is here, steamed optionally with 5% lemongrass or 5% pandan leaves. To fry the aromatics, chicken rice recipes usually suggest rendering out the fat from the cavity for chicken oil. But I really want to challenge the idea if chicken oil is really necessary for chicken rice. Since so little is used, and as we learned earlier, the oil alone doesn't contribute much flavour. I also found in my last video about chicken oil that a 1-3% oil to the weight of rice is good enough to give the rice a touch of chicken flavour without making it overly sticky from the grease. This is pure chicken oil by the way, rendered out from the skin only with no other added oil, and when chilled, it becomes like a yellow butter. So I tested out different oils by first having a control of no oil, meaning the rice is just boiled in stock with aromatics, versus another sample stir-fried in neutral oil, or in chicken oil, or in our favourite aromatics, shallot oil, which I made by lightly browning shallots in a pool of neutral oil to impart its flavour into the oil. Very good fragrant oil. But to my surprise, she said they all taste similar to each other, so I think it's because the chicken stock itself is already very flavourful, and we have a strong aromatics combo which would cover any flavour differences from the oil. Since we're going to use a good chicken stock which contains some chicken oil already anyway, we need not worry so much about the type of oil used to stir-fry the aromatics. Later on, we'll compare the technique of stir-frying the aromatics in oil if it makes any difference to the flavour. But before we try different techniques of cooking rice, the final ingredient to it is salt. How much salt should we add to the rice? I learned that 2% salt is used when making sourdough bread, and I found this to be a good standard too, 2% of salt versus raw rice weight, which turns out to be not too salty but still savoury enough. The key though is to ensure my chicken stock is unseasoned, so it's easier to get the seasoning of the rice just right. The aromatics may dull the saltiness a little, but 2% salt in rice still turns out well seasoned. I prefer to add salt at the pounding stage as it helps to break down the aromatics into mush faster, as you can see the difference once I added salt. Almost caused a dent on the floor, but luckily no one got hurt. Maybe the wooden board, but it was alright. Now that we have our ingredients finalised, let's compare the technique of smashing them. All this while, I've been using a mortar and pestle throughout my test as it's more effective to pound small amounts of aromatics into mush, compared to the blender where ingredients get stuck at the sides and are still in chunky bits. A workaround though when working with big or small portions is to blend it with the stock, and then strain it to get the aromatic bits. I would use the blender when cooking for a big crowd, but for the minimalist, there's the good old knife technique of mincing and rubbing. Adding a little salt helps to break it down further into a paste. Each technique here results in different texture, and I have here three samples made using the same ingredients but different technique. And she likes the blender or knife technique because it gives some tiny cubes of ginger bits, giving the rice a light crunch. But for me, I prefer the aromatics to be mushy to meld with the rice. Finally, there's this stir-frying step of the aromatics and we know that browning adds more flavour. But let's compare the taste of browning versus no browning. For the first sample, I'm using the aromatics boiled in stock like before. The second sample is when I stir-fry the aromatics in our oil of choice. I give it a light toss to press and release the aroma and some of the moisture in the aromatics until they clump up with no fond at the bottom, then add the stock. Just before the stock completely evaporates, I give it a stir so that the aromatic bits on top are evenly mixed into the rice. Yes, it's okay to open the cover while cooking rice as long as there's some liquid left underneath because you can generate the steam again by covering it. The third sample is to do it longer as I try to lightly caramelise the aromatics till it forms a brown fond at the bottom. Then I add the rice and the stock to deglaze and scrape off the fond until it's clean. You can see in these three rice samples how the colour becomes more brown due to stir-frying. Turns out that the browned rice has a toasty, caramel flavour with slight bitterness from the char, and we still overall prefer the cleaner, traditional flavours of chicken in aromatics from boiling or light tossing. 
TLDW Too Long Didn't Watch. In summary, I made chicken rice over 50 times across 15 tests to build my favorite recipe and found the most important component of the rice to be the liquid which we boil our rice in. And the best liquid is not from the water of a boiled chicken, but from chicken bones simmered for 24 hours until the bones become soft and crumbly. Then we build layers of flavor with aromatics, and this is our favorite aromatics combo. I also found that rendering chicken oil from the skin isn't really a must, and the key takeaway for cooking rice is to have good chicken stock. With many other techniques compared and chosen with reason, I've written here my own chicken rice recipe for the rice that Natasha likes the most, and I'm also giving you my recipe for free in the video description below.